My campaign was titled E-Citizen, Building Synergies to Promote European Citizenship. Um, and uh, the point of the campaign was to gather or uh, make uh, different organizers of European citizens' initiatives that were concerned with European citizenship come together and try to find ways of promoting European citizenship in the future through the European Citizens Initiative as a legal instrument uh, on offer at the European Union level in a way that's cooperative rather than conflictual. Namely, when at one point in 2017 I was looking at the ongoing ECIs, or European Citizens Initiatives, I saw that four to five of them were simultaneously dealing with more or less the same questions. There were ECIs requesting uh, political rights for uh, citizens of the UK after Brexit. There were uh, ECIs requesting the European Union to uh, deepen civic education at the European level. So there were different aspects of European citizenship that citizens across the EU were demanding the Commission to legislate on through ECIs. And I thought that instead of uh, conflicting each other or overlapping in the competition to try to get over a million signatures in order to initiate the legislative process at the EU level, it's better to build a network of all these different stakeholders, civil society organizations and interested uh, convinced Europeans across 27 member states to build one ECI that would actually work and expand the notion of European citizenship. Uh, I had um, the luck and the privilege to uh, take part in what's called the ECI Day. It is a day uh, completely devoted to uh, the monitoring of implementation of European Citizens Initiative, always hosted at the European Economic and Social Committee in Brussels. And there I had a panel or a, what they called a, a participative interactive workshop where these organizers could discuss ways of future cooperation. Now, um, that's a difficult question, but one that I'm always happy to debate. Um, we often think of European identity as having to fulfill the high benchmarks of a national identity. So European Commission, the European Parliament, from the Maastricht Treaty onwards, they try to uh, create uh, a European identity or a sense of belonging to Europe uh, among citizens which would be parasitical or emulating traditional national identity. Um, so you have the European flag, the European anthem, different ways of uh, trying to incite a sense of belonging to Europe, um, which would be similar to the national one. And I think this is a completely wrong or inverse way of going about it. Instead of trying to artificially uh, turn European identity into some sort of strong cultural binding identity, which would then have to be in a relations or a zero-sum game with national identities, I think that being European does not negate uh, being Slovenian in my case, or Spanish or Italian, but is uh, like um, an onion or a babushka, complementary and has to build on your national um, identity. So for me, being European uh, means to be a member, uh, to feel Slovenian or feel your national identity, but not in an exclusionary manner, in an inclusive way. So to Europeanize your national identity. But what it means to be a European citizen requires that we define what it means to be a citizen. And for me, this sense of belonging or identity is uh, not something that can be artificially created. It can only be the result of prior uh, features of citizenship, which for me are more important. And for me, these two features that come before belonging are um, rights. Um, and let me first explain that. So. Being a citizen means that you are aware and entitled to certain rights. Uh, these rights evolved as civic, political and finally socio-economic rights, which as citizen you are entitled to. But these rights mean nothing unless you are prepared to uh, actively uh, defend your rights as citizen. So the second feature of uh, any citizen should be participation. Um, there is no such thing as a passive citizenship, it needs to be an active citizenship. And then, as a result of um, your rights and your participation, you become, you, you get the sense of belonging. Now, on a European level, I find that being a European citizen means that you have the right to claim your rights, 
which is exactly what European Citizens Initiative as an instrument gives you the right to, then it means uh, the right to participate transnationally uh, with other Europeans across nation states in defending or expanding the catalogue of your rights, which is again something that the European Citizens Initiative is instrumental to. And as a result of all this in a long-term process, after many years of using this instrument, I'm sure that our sense of belonging to Europe will be much stronger. Yes, the question of how can you exercise European citizenship and your rights uh, that uh, your treaties are giving you is uh, indeed a difficult and a pertinent one. Um, and I also believe that here we need to work on how we frame citizenship, on how we explain what it means to be a citizen to ourselves and to our peers in, uh, across nation states. Um, I think we have a completely uh, impoverished uh, vision of what it means to be a citizen, a European citizen, in two ways. In, firstly, um, it is often believed that you trigger the right to uh, uh, claim the rights that uh, belong to European citizenship by crossing the border of your nation state and moving abroad. So then you exercise Europeanness as, uh, I don't know, a Slovenian working in Germany. Um, and I find that you don't need to physically move in order to uh, be European. So many other people um, are exercising their rights by traveling but permanently residing in their nation state. You read European uh, newspaper, you read the parts of uh, the media which refer to Europe, so you're Europeanized in your everyday um, life. Um, and another way to actually exercise citizenship without actually having to physically uh, build relations with Europeans in other nation states is to understand that uh, we are not uh, um, just a physical public sphere. It is possible to create a, a European public sphere digitally. And there are now uh, new ways of, for example, uh, signing an ECI or organizing an ECI without having to actually physically meet with anyone uh, because there are digital platforms in place which allow you to collect signatures and uh, finish the process of European citizenship completely digitally. If there is anything to be learned from the history of citizenship, it is that uh, it is not a privilege. It is. Uh, result of, a, of a, a struggle. So all the rights which we, which we now take for granted because they're enshrined in our national constitutions are actually a result of very difficult and uncertain struggles of our um, predecessors of citizens that lived before us uh, who were fighting for their rights. Um, such is also the European citizenship. It, uh, is difficult. The fact that it's enshrined in law doesn't mean that you actually can uh, get it. And the point is to try to uh, find conditions and build ways for those who don't have access to these rights to have it. And I'm sure that the European Alternatives Campus is one of these venues where we are trying to be experimental and trying to be creative in finding ways of those, for those who uh, are having difficulties to access the rights there are entitled to on paper to uh, get it. I don't have the, all the answers, but um, I think that uh, there is the will among the young people, if not the politicians, to help everyone get to the rights they're entitled to. I had the blessing in disguise to move to the UK only after Brexit and being a um, convinced European with a direct possibility to analyze uh, reactions of people and UK citizens to, to how the negotiations have been going, I am under the impression that uh, they only realized what they were losing once it was too late or once they already voted to leave. 
I think that uh, only now a lot of people realize what it will mean to lose the, the to lose the European dimension of their citizenship or to use lose the rights that they gained from European citizenship. And uh, if you look at this debate on uh, soft light Brexit or Brexit light, it is in fact that they they would now like to reverse the process. When we think about how can EU citizenship be expanded, I think that uh, we need to make a preliminary classification um, in the following way. So there are some rights which can be added to the catalogue uh, we already have, uh, which uh, would not require treaty change, and there are other rights which would actually require us to completely change the treaties. What I think uh, does not require treaty change is uh, the possibility uh, to add the right to um, vote on national elections uh, while you're uh, an EU citizen residing in a different member state. Currently you only have the right to vote at the local level and for the elections for European Parliament. Another uh, extension of European citizenship that has gained currency in recent times, especially after Brexit, is something people refer to as associative citizenship. So the ability to uh, retain your citizenship right, even if, you're, uh, if the member state to which you belong decides to um, leave the European Union. And in fact, just a couple of days ago, there was a new, most recent European citizenship European Citizens Initiative that was registered with the European Commission that asked for, in fact, the same thing. So for UK nationals to retain their European citizenship. And there are many different varieties of ways in which this can be uh, done and it will be interesting to see how this evolves in the future. But uh, the key take uh, on this is that a lot of things we considered impossible because we had this impoverished uh, notion of what it means to be a European citizen that I spoke about before are actually completely legally possible. What is lacking is the political will. We are now in the middle of the process of the revision of the regulation which governs the ECI, which will hopefully make this a much more user-friendly instrument. I will not go into details of all the changes that the instrument will undergo, but hopefully by this time next year we will have uh, an ECI which is much more user-friendly and much more effective. Um, there are technical shortcomings which will be overcome, but the key thing to make it an instrument that you and I as European will want to use is not uh, to make it technically better, but actually to make uh, all the p it politically more impactful. Uh, and that means to find ways to ensure that the European Commission will actually initiate the legislative process if you reach more than one million citizens. We have several cases until now of successful initiatives on which the Commission decided not to react. And the key political struggle in the near future will be how to make it react. Uh, one successful case that we have in the short history of the European Citizens Initiative is the one which uh, was against TTIP, the Transatlantic Treaty. It is incredible because it is the ECI that managed to uh, gather the most signatures, over three million, and it uh, completely uh, was organized ultra vires, which means uh, outside of the scope of uh, the regulation because the Commission would deny the registration of this treaty and yet the, the organizer said it's important, we're still going to pursue uh, the collection of signatures. And only years after the court said the Commission was not right to deny the registration of this treaty so the organizers were proven right. And I think this is the best lesson for the ECI because it shows that when you are convinced that you're right as European citizens, you can act transnationally and it will work. A Belgian minister said a couple of decades ago a phrase which has become a commonplace in European studies that uh, the European Union is e an economic giant, a political dwarf, uh, and a militant worm. Uh, I think that this phrase can be applied to European citizenship in a similar way to say that European citizenship today um, in the public imagery is an economic giant, a political 
dwarf uh, and a militant worm. Let me explain. It means that when we speak of EU citizenship, we mostly speak about it as enabler of the common market. We know that we have some political rights, such as you know the vote to the European Parliament, uh, but in terms of militant citizenship, of us as citizens militantly defending our rights and asking for the expansion of our rights, it is still a worm. So I think that the evolution in European citizenship will uh, be possible in as much as we as citizens take matters in our own hands and demand the expansion of the rights.